A warm welcome to this special video leavers service with the theme Irises of Hope. My name's Anthony Kane and I'm Dean of Portsmouth and I'm really sorry not to be able to welcome you here to Portsmouth Cathedral where I'm standing now, but that's not possible for obvious reasons. Neither, I'm guessing, is it the end of your school year that you ideally would have liked. I do hope that your friends and your family have kept well over the past year. And if that's not been the case, that you've received the support and the care that you needed. I wish you all the very best as you prepare to begin your new school in September, taking with you, I hope, some positive learning from all the difficulties of the past year, not least the incredible importance of looking out for one another and supporting one another. Enjoy the service, have a good summer, and Godspeed. Hello everyone, my name is Sue and I'm one of the education advisors on the diocesan education team. I'm here today to welcome you but also to thank you and to say thank you for all the work that you've done this year and all your years at primary school. I'm also here to say thank you for those schools and those of you that took part in our Irises of Hope project this term. It was a very special project for us. Irises, like this one, were chosen because they symbolise hope. All flowers have meanings behind them and we chose the iris because of that message of hope. It's our hope for you for a happy future. And it's one of the reasons why we asked you to plant some irises in your schools this term. Traditionally, irises were given to people that needed hope for the future, support and love. So you've done that for the children that come behind you in the school and will be year sixes like you next year. Irises are also known as rainbow flowers and that's because although most of them are a sort of bluey purple colour, they actually come in all sorts of colours. So they're known as the rainbow flower. Rainbows in the Bible symbolise hope too. You'll remember there was a huge rainbow that appeared in the sky at the end of the story of Noah after the flood. And that was God's promise to people that he would always be there to look after them going forward into the future, like you are into your next schools. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side whilst he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by waves, was far from land, but the winds were against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed a strong wind became frightened he, and beginning to sink, he cried out, God, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith. They got into the boat and the wind ceased. All those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Hello, I'm Canon Catherine, and it's wonderful to welcome you to Portsmouth Cathedral. Really sorry not to be able to see you in person this year, but I'm in a rather unusual place. I'm a bit out of breath because I've just climbed up an awful lot of stairs. Now, I wonder if you've ever done something that you know you're going to find really scary, but you know you want to do it anyway. I'm just about to do something that I'm going to find really scary. Oh, it's a very 
very long way down. That's the worst bit because it just goes straight down. Well, here I am on the roof of the cathedral and I'm really scared of heights. So I'm a bit nervous at the moment, but I'm just hanging on to this nice bit of stone. And over there, I can see the sea, which looks really beautiful today. And it reminds me of that big lake we've heard about in our reading, a lake so big it's like the sea. And the disciples were on the lake and the wind and the waves were really fierce. And then they see someone coming towards them, walking on the water, and they're really scared. And of course, it's Jesus. And he says to them, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, because he's there with them, and he's there to give them hope. And Peter, I love Peter, because he often shows us what the right thing is to do, but he also gets things wrong. And so Peter says, well, I want to go. I want to go at walking on the water. And he gets out of the boat, and he walks on the water, and he knows that he needs to focus on that hope that Jesus has just given them, that drives away the fear. And he does to start with, but then he gets distracted. And when he gets distracted, he starts to sink. But it's okay, because Jesus is there, and Jesus' hope is still there, and he pulls him out, and he rescues him. Now, why have I come up to the roof when I'm really scared? Well, partly because sometimes it's good to do things that scare you a bit, but also because I wanted to show you close up this wonderful beacon right at the top of the cathedral. Now, it used to be a lighthouse. So it used to shine out to sea and actually help the ships know where the land was and how they could navigate. And of course, it still shines out to sea today and it shines out on the land as well. It's not needed as a lighthouse anymore, but it still is a beacon of hope because it reminds everyone who sees it of the hope we have in Jesus. And I know that if I look this way, I don't feel quite so afraid because there's that wonderful tower to keep me anchored so that I know where I am. And it's the same with the hope in Jesus. This has been a really tricky year. And the fact that we're having to record a video for all of you it's great fun, but we wish we could actually see you. And that's just a symptom of how tricky this year has been for so many of us. And it's important when times are really tough to just hang on to that light, to hang on to that light of Jesus that stops us being afraid. To know that when bad things happen, we've still got that hope. And so we don't need to be afraid even when times are tough. Now you're about to move on to your new school and to say goodbye maybe to some friends from your old school. So your life's about to change a bit over the summer and going into the autumn. And you might have a whole swirl of feelings about that. You might be feeling a bit like I am now on the roof. You might be feeling a bit, bit shaky and a bit nervous. You might be feeling really excited. You might be feeling probably a funny combination of those and all sorts of things in between. And all those feelings are completely normal and completely okay. And the important thing is to just hang on to the fact that God loves you and Jesus gives you hope through all the difficult things and all the wonderful things that are going to come in your lives to come. So my prayer for you is that you will know this hope as you journey onwards. God bless. So... Let's hear from some of our schools and how they got on with our Irises of Hope project. I hope that climate change comes to an end. I hope that animal curacy stops. I hope that I become a footballer. I hope for world hunger to end. I hope that all wars end. I hope that racism will end. I hope to become a teacher. I hope coronavirus ends. I hope for a good start to secondary school. I hope to have lots of friends in secondary school. I bought hope by staying at home and following the guidelines. We bought hope in the pandemic by putting rainbows up on our windows. 
Christians believe they can have hope in God. Christians hope that God will lead them down the right path. Christians have hope that God will be with them through hard times. Christians have hope that God will protect them and keep them safe. Hope is important to me because it gives me a future. Hope is important to me because it gives me courage. Hope is important to me because it gives me joy. Intelligent irises intensely sway in the gentle breeze, daffodils dimming as the daylight fades. Roses are red, violets are blue. Irises represent hope and hope lives in you. The blue beautiful sky fades into a ruddy pinky sunset. The gentle breeze swooshes my hair back and forward. As I fall onto the fabulous flowers, it felt, feels like I was on the world's biggest mattress as a little bunny hopped over while the birds fly over me. I looked around, I could see nature's wonder looking through my heart. I could feel the sun rays reaching to me tight like a teddy bear. I could feel the garden of heaven touching my palms. I could hear the wind, the wind calling me to my destiny. I could see the trees, they were as tall as a skyscraper. I looked at the crystal clear water, seeing what I truly am. Next to me, a family tree of irises, all stood straight like a soldier standing to attention with their array of colour. I could hear the birds humming in the wind, singing the song of heaven. The lush flowers butter yellow and the sun's burning heat, the place me, my family and friends all like to meet. It makes my skin tingle and makes me feel calm and small velvet petals fall into my palm. I look into the sky, the clouds fluffy as can be, then into the distance, iris colours as far as I can see. Faithful God, as we near the end of our time at primary school, we give thanks for the experiences that we have shared together, for the opportunities we have been given and for all the people who have helped us. As we move on to our next schools, help us to build on all we have learned so that we can play our part in bringing hope to those around us. Amen. Loving God, we give you thanks that you have been with us through the ups and downs of our time at school so far. Help us to be thoughtful when others are having a hard time. Teach us to show kindness and understanding to those who we are tempted to look down on. Give us the strength to make our communities a fairer place for everyone by standing up for your values and sharing what we have been given. Amen. Creator God, we pray for our planet and all people in it. We pray for those whose lives are uprooted by wars and climate change. We pray for those who have no homes or access to education. Through our words and actions, help us to represent the hopeful future that the world needs. May we have the courage to care for our environment so that it can be a safe home for future generations. We ask these things with confidence of knowing that you hear our prayers. In Jesus' name, Amen. Although not as good as meeting in person, I hope this video has been helpful as you begin to think about that transition to your new school. As we finish, let's pray for God's blessing upon us, our friends, our families, 
the schools that we leave behind and the schools that we go to. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you his love, his joy and his peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.